Let's begin. I want to talk today about how to improve your reading skills, in particular, comprehension and locating main ideas. So this talk is an introductory talk on how we start to improve reading skills. And there are two points I want to make today and only two points because this is a very complicated and very interesting topic that deserves time for each step of the way. So we're going to devote to two very basic steps. The first one is comprehension. First, you have to understand what you're reading. And then secondly, we start to move into more advanced reading skills. And I'm going to introduce one skill, which is locating the main idea in a text. So the goal of this live is to identify the basic skills or core competencies. A competence is a skill of reading. And I th hopefully this will be very clear. For some of you, it will be rep maybe for some obvious. For others, it will not be obvious. But I'm taking us in a systematic way through this. Now, let's take a look at the problem. And speaking of systematic, there's a systematic problem in education everywhere. It's, it happened with me as well. Schools in general, schools do not teach you how to read. They give you a reading assignment. They expect you to read, but no one actually teaches you the skill or art of reading. And there is an art, there is a skill to it. So either you have the wherewithal, wherewithal is a great word, wherewithal, it's one word. You have the facilities, the capabilities to improve on your own or you flounder. Birds flounder. If you flounder, that means you don't make progress. You flounder. And this is a very frustrating experience if you flounder. It's, and in my experience as a teacher, even bright students aren't good readers if they haven't been taught specifically the skill of reading. So I'm going to go through this. And if you find it interesting, we can do parts two and three advanced level reading concepts. Today, I'm going to introduce the sort of basics that you must have to get the ball rolling. To get the ball rolling means to get started. Now, the other thing that's unfortunate is that the IELTS and other international exams, other national exams, have reading components of English, but in general, you're, never, you're not taught how to read there either. And that's the irony. The IELTS and the TOEFL and other international exams, CAE, SAE, um, CAE proficiency, they're designed to test your ability to read, but what most teachers end up doing is teaching this like a vocabulary map and you identify key words in the question with key words in the text, and you never really read. You never really improve the skill of reading. This is unfortunate because this is what the universities want you to be able to do. So even after the IELTS, most students aren't prepared to read because of the way it's taught. Now, I'm not putting all of the blame on teachers who teach the IELTS. I think part, in fact, a lion's share, a lion's share means the majority, a lion's share of the, of the responsibility or guilt falls on the makers of the exam. There are two, there are so many questions. I think 40 questions in 60 minutes and most students can't cope with this. So you have to find shortcuts. And the shortcut is you don't read. You just look for keywords. So you look, you're, you're a synonym finder. So no one is taught how to read. I'm going to teach you how I think a, a good way, it's not the only approach to reading skills, but I think it's a very solid way. And I'm not sure it's taught anywhere. I'm, I'm quite certain it's not gonna be taught like this on any YouTube video. So make sure and recommend this to your friends um, once it's up on my YouTube channel. 
Now, how to become a better reader. I'm going step by step. So here is step one. This is obvious, but we need, you need to recognize it so you don't get frustrated. You need to know that you're in step one so and realize that there's progress to be made. Now, step one means that you, you read whatever it is you're reading, a blog, an Instagram post, a news article, an article in a magazine or a book, an ebook, you read any of the first call of duty, the first responsibility, the first priority is that you understand what is being said. If you don't understand parts of it or a lot of it or even some of the key passages, then you cannot analyze. There's no, you cannot read at a higher level until you understand what the words mean. So here are the initial obstacles for many students. And if you're a teacher out there, you need to recognize this and be patient with your students. A lot of teachers, because they haven't been taught how to read you know, in a sort of systematic manner, they've just learned it and they expect others to do it. It's not so simple, as I find even at university with very smart students. It's not obvious for a lot of students. So the first obstacle, my first responsibility as a teacher is to find out, do they understand the text? Which means students, you, the reader, are going to have to look up words, understand what these sentence structures are, or phrases or idioms that are used that are unfamiliar with you. And then you might have to have a, you have to have a basic mastery of grammar. You have to understand what clauses are and what um, phrases are and how it, inverted word over order tag questions. These provide sort of a framework for you to understand the message. Because after all, this is merely a message from me to you, but we're not talking because we never met. I'm writing it down. So we have symbols and you have to understand how all these symbols work so that you understand what I meant when I wrote that. This is important step that you have to master. Now, what does this mean? I can tell you what it meant for me is I learned the different languages um, for my studies. I would just read look up words, read, study a bit of grammar and, 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 and phrases, and read and look up words and words until I started to look up fewer words, and then I knew I understood the language. You're gonna have to do the same. There is no substitute for hard work. Lots of questions I'm receiving on Instagram are asking for fast approaches. If you want quality, if you wanna develop a skill you can't shortcut skills. You can shortcut exams, but you can't shortcut a skill. Skills need to be developed, but it's worth it because skills allow you to do great things in your job or in other areas of your life that shortcuts will never allow you to do. Shortcuts are temporary solutions. Developing your skill is a long-term path to victory in my opinion. So you want to develop the skills. Before you can do that, you have to understand what's being read. This is a very important step, so don't get frustrated. Step one might take a long time, but it's the most important. We can't develop your reading skills if you only understand 40% of the text. We can't, I can't as a teacher, develop your reading skills if you only understand 50 or possibly 60%. I can only encourage you to move that up to over 75 and then we can begin to move forward. I hope that's clear. We can talk about it at the end. What to read in step one. I'm gonna make very specific suggestions on what you can read to develop the skill of comprehension. And basically that is to read informative articles articles that tell you about something, a little bit like Wikipedia articles. They're informing you. They're not trying to make an argument. They're not trying to persuade you or change your mind. 
They are giving you information. So here's an example from the BBC, from today's BBC. U.S. coronavirus cases top 15 million. So I can read that. You can see it's very small on the left column. I can read that, and that's just information. And so it's there, this fact, and then this fact, and then this fact. So informative artic articles are sets of facts that is being reported to you that you didn't know about. So at the end of the article, you go, oh, okay, now I know. Now I know. This is an informative article. And you want to read these if you're at the lower levels. These are the easiest articles to read for comprehension because there's a very simple structure. It's either based on time, this happened, then this happened, then this happened, or on facts. So this event or, you know, uh, in, in, in the state of California, this many cases of coronavirus in, in Texas, this many in New York, this many. So it's just fact, 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 or events in a chronological order. So it's very easy to follow. What mistake I see very often from very ambitious students, but perhaps not well planned, is they say, I want to read difficult articles, and they miss this first step. It's much easier to understand the language, to understand the words and the grammar structures and the phrases and sentence types if you read informative articles, because it's the easiest type of reading to do. If you start reading academic journals where there's a lot of sophisticated structure and a lot of nuance, you will quickly become confused. I'm not recommending that for early readers. And if you're a teacher, do not assign students these. Assign your lower level students informative articles. These are easy and they can focus on the language, not the argument, not the theory, not the structure. It's all simple and it allows the student to keep focused on understanding, on, on comprehension. All right. Are, again, here's one from the New Yorker, a uh, New York Times. Articles that report on events. This is interesting as well, and it's very simple to read. So this is talking about a stimulus package. The, uh, the United States government wants to give citizens money during the coronavirus, and it just talks about the proposal. What's in the proposal? So this is very informative. Nothing more. Nothing more than that. And on the right side is the economy. They're not trying to persuade us or convince us of a position. They're merely informing us of the facts. So these are straightforward. You can read informative articles in any on any subject. See, this is easy to find. Um, well, it's. I will talk about distinguishing them in a minute because we're going to go to step two. Now, here's where we start with the more advanced level of reading. Once you feel like you understand the gist of an article, gist, G-I-S-T, the gist is the main idea. Once you understand the gist of an article, then you can start to think more deeply about it. So your reading skills can be developed. So are you ready? This is the first skill that I recommend you practice, that you try to develop, and that is locating main ideas, locating the most important sentence or phrase in the article. This is a skill that is not obvious, but can be taught. So if you're a teacher, you can teach this. If you're a student, you can learn it. That's the good news. So let me just briefly talk about what to, the differences between step one and step two. On the left, we have what informative articles or what happened articles. So this happened, then this happened, then this happened. It's just giving you information. That's the, that's the step one, you, when you read for comprehension. Now, when we move to step two, we want to look at different types of articles, articles that ask why or how, not how to make apple pie, but 
how something happened. Because when you ask how or why, it forces the writer to make to take a position, to give his perspective or his point of view. And this is the key difference between the literature or the readings in step one and step two. In step one, there's no main idea or argument. There's a subject. We're gonna talk about cooking. We're gonna talk about cooking or making apple pie. You do this, this, this. But there's no argument or controversial idea in general. It depends how you make the pie, I suppose. (laughs) But in step two, with the argumentative ideas, now suddenly you have a little bit more sophisticated structure because you have a main idea. And the first responsibility that you have as a reader and that you as a teacher have towards your students is to make sure they know where that is and understand what the main idea is. So let me express this slide slightly differently. I wanna talk about it one more time because this is a really important moment in the live and you have to understand this distinction. So once again, the key differences. On the left, we've talked about in step one, informative essays, what happened. And now look at the next piece of information. This is important. All pieces of information in informative articles are more or less equally important. They're equally important. But when we move to articles uh, to practice our skills in step two, it's argument based. We want to, it contains a main idea or an argument. And guess what? that changes the dynamics and the structure of the writing. Now, information is unequal. Some ideas, some sentences are more important than others. And I've, I've pictured here a pyramid for all my friends in Egypt who are out there. It's like a pyramid. At the top, you have the main idea, the most important sentence in the article in the story, whatever it is. <clears throat> and as you go down, it's gradually less important, but it, it, it's the foundation. It proves or supports your main idea. And that's why it's the foundation. But that top point, without the top point, all the rest of the information doesn't make sense because you don't know how it fits together. The main idea provides cohesion, clarity, for the rest of the information, which is ordered hierarchically. Now, we do do pronunciation on Saturdays, so I want to practice this word because it's really difficult. Hierarchically. It comes from the word hierarchy. A hierarchy, I think we know we have people at the top and then larger numbers at the bottom. Hierarchy, but I use the adjective hierarchical. (laughs) Very difficult. Hierarchical. So you can practice that one if you want. All right, so here is our reading skill practice for today. Improving your reading by locating the main idea. Locating the main idea. There are two main places you find the main idea. You find the main idea often, or especially in news articles, in the title. So here is an article from yesterday from the BBC, how young workers are changing the rules of business speak. Now this is not, the reason this is argumentative is because they're going to tell in this article how these young workers are doing it. They're doing it this way and this way and this way. Maybe there'll be three things they'll talk about on how language, business language, or business speak, that's business language, is changing. So this is the BBC's argument. We believe young people are changing business lingo, business parlance. These are all sexy synonyms for language. Business lingo, L-I-N-G-O, or parlance, P-A-R-L-A-N-C-E. It comes from the Latin. Uh, we, we take that parlance, parlor, parlare in Italian. Or in... And <clears throat> so that is an idea that will be proven in the article. 
And it's important in these types of articles to understand, and this is the question you have to ask yourself, what's the most important point in this article? What is the main idea? Or what's the argument? And in this case, the BBC is arguing young people are changing the way we speak English in business. I've paraphrased that, but that's what, that's what that article is about. Let's look at one more example of an uh, um, <clears throat> argumentative essay. So this is from the New York Times, and they're saying that the pandemic, the coronavirus, fi the financial assistance from the government for people during the, uh, the coronavirus, during the pandemic, has attracted lots of scammers. This is an argument that they're going to try to sell us or tell us. And they're, they're probably going to say it's attracted hordes. Hordes mean a lot of, a lot of, a lot of gleeful. Gleeful is happy and gutsy. Gutsy means you're willing to take a risk a little bit too much. It's a very, it's risky. So hordes, lots of a gleeful, happy, uh, risk, risk takers, scammers. I think we know scammer. I think it's international, the word scammer, unfortunately. So this is an argument and they're probably going to say, I didn't read it, but they're probably going to say they've attracted it because of this, because of this, and because of this. So they, they, they will try to prove that. But here we have the main idea found in the title found in the title. This is really important. All right, now I'm going to show you there's a second location and that's found in the article itself and I've underlined the, the, the sentence. So this is an article from The Economist. This is a financial or an uh, um, economical ec economy magazine called The Economist. We have a title, Index of Happiness. That's obviously not an argument. We don't know what that means. This is more creative. There's a creative title. Now, if you read the article, or read the first paragraph, you're going to see that the last sentence is the main idea. It's the argument. I'll read it. Africans buy 36 million bottles of Coke a year. That's a fact. The price is set low, around 20 to 30 cents. That's a fact. Less than the cost of a newspaper. That's a fact. The company also closely keeps track of the sales so they know how many bottles of Coke are being sold every day. Then, thus, and here's our clue, the Coke bottle may be one of the continents, African continent's best trackers to keep track or control controllers, if you want to use this word, of economic stability. So this is the argument that this article is going to try to sort of sell us on. This is the main idea of the article. It's found near the in the introduction, near the end of the introduction in this case. So this is the main idea. So what am I trying to say? The last sentence is the most important sentence, not only in this paragraph, but in the whole article. If, you, if we take that sentence out, the reader is reading and asking this, but what's the point? What's the author's main point? And when we put this in, it all makes sense. We can, we can delete the first sentence and the reader will not struggle with the meaning of the article. But if we delete the last sentence, the main idea, the reader will be lost. They're asking, okay, is this just informative or where is this going? Um, and we know that The Economist doesn't, um, you know, generally they have argumentative sort of essays or articles. All right, I hope that's clear, but if it's not, watch this. I'm, I've changed this article in the next slide to show you what an informative article looks like. So we're gonna look at the, same article, and I'm going to show you the difference between informative and argumentative. So this is argumentative. Now watch this one. Here's the same article, but I've changed it slightly. Africans buy 36 billion bottles of Coke a year. Fact. Their sales are found in all 56 country, 54 countries. Fact. The price is set low 
around 20 to 30 cents, fact, less than an at cost of an average newspaper, fact. This allows millions of people to afford it. This is an informative introduction on how, you know, Coke and how big it is or popular it is in Africa. There's no main point. There's nothing there that's suggesting they're not trying to prove anything. So do you see the difference between informative where you're just reading, you can relax a bit and just soak up the information. In the first one, however, you have to read and you're asking yourself, okay, where's the main idea? So you have to focus a little bit more. And that focus a little bit more is where you develop your first reading skill after comprehension. Does that make sense? I hope so. This is a really important first point. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to give you one more example of, and I'll answer your questions at the end, so please be patient. We're nearly finished. I'll do one, one more here. <clears throat> example, where you have the thesis statement or the main idea, the controlling idea, lots of different ways to express this in the, in the introduction, more or less the introduction. So here we have the title, Island States and Climate Policy. So states that are islands and climate policy. Small island developing states account for less than 1% of the world's economy, territory, population, and greenhouse gas emissions. Remember, this is on the climate. That is a fact. That first statement is filled with lots of interesting facts. Sentence two. On most issues, their voice, the voice of these little island states, is barely heard on the world stage. Yet, however, and here comes the most important sentence, on climate matters, they have, over the last three decades, over the last 30 years, become an effective political lobby. That's the main idea, and I'm expecting the rest of the article to tell me why they're so effective. They're effective because of this reason, because of this reason, because of this reason. So here we have, once again, the last sentence is the most important sentence in the whole article, and certainly in the introduction. We could get rid of one of the sentences in the introduction, and we would still have an argument and a cohesive you know, article. This is really important but not easy first second step. Identifying the most important sentence, if, you're, if you've not done it before, will take practice. You're going to have to do that. Um, it's not easy. I will suggest a few things at the end. All right, characteristics of the main idea. So that, that sentence that's underlined, I wanna talk about that sentence for just a minute or so. It's generally found in the introduction or in the title. So there's a positioning that will give you a clue as to where it's at. Number two, it generally makes one main point. Sometimes it makes two points, very rarely three or more. And number three, the rest of the article or piece supports this main idea, or at least it should support this main idea if it's well written. So you want to read good articles. I've given you suggestions last week on what good literature is, and I've also given you suggestions this week by the articles I've chosen from the BBC, from the New York Times, from The Economist. These are articles that are more or less well written. All right, I wanna, I wanna just, I'm sorry you can't see that uh, one word. Um, it, the, the, the poll that I want to ask you, and I'd like some feedback afterwards, and I might make a story in the Instagram on it. Would you like to hear about the advanced writing, I'm sorry, advanced reading skills? Would you like me to talk through those? Because this is just the basics I've covered today. Would you, if you're interested in the advanced reading skills, please let me know, and then I'll consider doing that. So a wrap up, the summary, what have we learned? You improve your reading by reading with a purpose. What's the purpose? In step one, the purpose is to understand what the text is about. Look, that means you have to look up words, 
Understand sentence structure. Study grammar. So understanding, that's reading with a purpose. Reading for a purpose in step two is identifying the main idea. Number two in wrap up, understand the difference between informative reading and idea-based reading or argument-based reading. And I've just talked about that. And number three, main ideas are usually found near the beginning of the piece and are more important than the rest of the information. All right, I don't have official homework. I was struggling to sort of understand how to do this and I'm, it's a very busy time in the semester for me at, at the university. So I'm gonna give something on your own that you can do on your own. I want you to start when you read this next week, if you're reading news articles, ask yourself, is this purely informative? Am I just understanding what happened or are, is the writer trying to convince me of their point of view, of their perspective, of their opinion? So if you can start to make this distinction, you are beginning to um, develop your reading skills. Now, some of you already know this and it's sort of review. I can talk about much more advanced skills if you'd like. Very interesting. I love this topic I think it, because I think it's super, super important that you understand these.